so now what we need to do is, you know, when it gets submitted, it needs to send this data to the back end. So how do we do that? So first off, we need to go to our auth.js um, store. Now inside of here, what we need to do is we need to just add in an action. Essentially, an action is just a method. Um, so in here, we can create an async um, um, an async method called register. And um, we're not actually going to commit anything. If you don't know uh, what's going on, um, I would recommend you pause this and look up how to use UX and all that. Um, so we're not actually going to commit anything in here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to commit something but through the store. Um, so we're going to use the um, underscore. And then here we're going to pass in the um, user, like so. Um, so that's going to be some data. Essentially, it'll be the user form, technically. So we could probably change that to form, like so. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, OK, so we need to access that store that we imported, the main store. And then we're going to commit on that main store. And we're going to say, we're going to say set loading, like so. And we're going to say, you know, what is the new the new state of the loading? True, like that. So now what that means is, you know, whenever you hit submit, it's going to um, send the you know the request to this register, and then it's going to turn the loading on, right? To let it to let the users know, hey, we're doing something. Um, so then now what we want to do is we want to create a request right um, so we're going to say um, return await and then we're going to say axios axios and then we're going to say post right and what we're going to post is we're going to post to the register endpoint and then we're going to send the form data right like that okay the more observant of you may have noticed that we're not putting the main the full path in there as in local host blah 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 register um, and the reason being is because what we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, to the main uh, view page uh, no, so the main JS page we're going to add in some stuff that will enable us just to use the relative path rather than the full full path and the way we, the way that we do that is we say um, axios um, dot uh, defaults and in here we're going to say um, base URL oh no that's wrong base URL and then the base URL is going to equal a string and it's going to be HTTP um, forward slash one to seven dot zero dot zero dot one uh, colon eight thousand forward slash API right so that's the essentially the the path to our um, local host backend and that's it that's all we need to do so now uh, if we go back to the store the auth store we can use this because it will automatically use that path and then just append uh, register onto it. Excellent. We can add a dot then um, and we can inside of here we can say I'm just going to copy this because I can't be asked to write it out again. Um, we're going to set the loading and then this time we're going to set it to false and there we go. That's it. But what happens if there's an error? So we've not covered that. So we need to add in a, a catch uh, statement and we will do it like that and then we're going to say so first off what we'll do is we will again tell it to stop loading um, and then we're going to say because you, you don't want it to continuously load and there be an error right and then we're going to console log the error obviously you wouldn't have this in production um, but um, yeah for now this will do so if we wanted to add something else to it we could just add it inside of the register uh, component which we'll head, head over to now, because now we need to access um, that action that was in the store inside of this method in the register component. 
And the way we can do that is we can, inside of the methods, do dot, dot, dot. Uh, that's just the spread operator. Uh, then we can map uh, actions, like so. Pretty much exactly like um, like the we did with the getters. Uh, so in here, what we're going to do is we're going to load in the um, the action, right? And that action is register. And now here, the path is going to be auth register, like so. So now what we can do is we can say this dot register, right? And that's going to call this action, this method. And we can pass into that this form, right? There we go. And if we wanted to add something on the end of it, we could, because it's been returned from the store, the Axios uh, method, we can then just call then and um, you know do something else like console.log um, finished, something like that. So now this um, should be functioning correctly, but there is something that we need to uh, configure. And that, if you remember, was the register endpoint inside of Symfony. So now we've got everything functioning correctly on the front end. And let's um, configure this to be able to uh, register our user. OK, so we're going to need to uh, pull in some stuff. Um, we need to, um, oh, function, um, construct like that. There we go. OK, so um, we're going to need to pull in the, um, the user repository user repository like that, user repository like so. Okay, and then we're going to need to pull in the um, security um, thing. I, I, my mind just went blank as to what it was called. Class, there we go. I really am a programmer. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to pull in the uh, serializer interface, um, oh actually not class, interface. Um, serializer interface, there we go. Um, and what this will enable us to do is it will enable us to send uh, JSON uh, back to the front end um, without having to do some, you know, crazy things and annoying things. So now we've pulled all that stuff in, uh, we're going to fill out this finally, we're going to fill out this, um, this method. So first off, what we need to do is we need to um, create um, a variable, and we'll call it JSON data. Um, and this JSON data is going to be a JSON uh, decode. And what we're going to decode is the um, request, which we don't actually have, so we need to pull that in. So we pass a re request, and it would be. Um, not that one. Request. There we go. Oh, no. Ooh, maybe it is that one. Um, like so. Yes, that is the correct one. HTTP foundation request. Okay, so now what we can do is we can get the request and then we're going to say get uh, content, like so. We're going to call that. Okay, so now what that's going to do is that's going to return. In a JSON um, object, um, the request content from whatever gets sent to this endpoint, right? Um, and then what we need to do is we need to create that user, right? Um, so we're going to say user, and okay, I'm going to write some pseudo code again because we don't, we've not, cr we've not created this in the re user repository. But we're going to say uh, user repository, and then we're going to say create, right? Um, we'll actually say, um, yeah, I think it's I think that's self-explanatory. User repository create. It's obviously going to create in the user repository. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass the JSON data into that, like so. There we go. Okay. And um, then just to finish this off, we will uh, return a new JSON response like this. And in here, we're going to respond with the user um, 
uh, the user information that's been created, right? Um, and this is where we're going to use the serializer. Um, so we're going to say serialize, and then we're going to say, uh, not serialize, we're going to say serializer, did we call it? Okay, we've, we've named it. We don't need to name it the interface. We can just say name it the serializer. Um, and then here we're going to say serialize. And then we're going to pass in the user object that is returned from this. And then we will tell it what we want it to, you know, what format we want it to be in, which is going to be JSON. Okay. Right. So now what we need to do is we need to add a semicolon there. And now we need to create this create uh, method inside of the user repository. Um, so we'll just click on that and it will take us there. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say public function and we're going to call this, um, shockingly, we're going to call it create. Right. And then we're going to pass um, some data in here, right? Um, and that uh, is the JSON data, right, from the form that we're receiving. So we'll we'll just call this data actually um, instead of JSON data because I want to. Um, and then what we're going to do in here is we're going to say we want to create a new user, right? And um, there we go. That should okay. So and we're going to uh, give this assign it to a variable. And we're going to call that variable user, right? Like so. Excellent. Okay. So now we need to. Um, you know, set some things. So we can set the username, right? And then we're going to access this uh, data um, parameter. I'm going to say data name, like so. And then we can set the um, email address, like this, email. And now we need to set the password. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because we need to um, first encode that password before we um, before we save it. So we can't do this. Um, well, actually, because that'll be setting the email. So we need to set the password. But we still can't do this because it will save it as a um, as a you know plain text password, which is terrible. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new password variable, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pull in. Uh, in the constructor, we will pull in uh, something called the user password password encoder interface. There we go, um, and it's going to be private. Um, oh, if you're not familiar with this syntax, this is uh, the PHP eight syntax that you can define a property inside of the um, inside of the constructor. It's it's pretty useful. Um, and we will just call that encoder, uh, password encoder, password encoder, like so. Okay. Um, so now what we can do is we can say this um, password encoder, encode password. And then we can pass in this data password like that. There we go. Um, so now we need to fix this, right? We don't want to assign that. We want to assign this new variable that we created called password. Um, and let's see, what does it say here? There's an unexpected, yeah, okay, because we didn't put a, a semicolon there. Right, okay, so essentially we're, we're pretty much done, right? Um, all we need to do now is save this user, which we can just sneakily copy from, from here. Um, because we need to run a persist and then we need to flush it uh, because remember your date your stuff won't get saved uh, from um, from persist it will get saved when it fl be it's flushed um, let's see what's what's happening here uh, okay okay so we need to pass in instead of just um, the uh, password we need to pass in the user um, so there we go that's that's pretty much that um, and the, the last thing we need to do is we need to return this user, right? And that is it. Okay, excellent. If we head back to the register, um, the auth controller, 
what we need to do here, um, just above the class, we need to add an annotation, um, a route annotation. Um, and this route annotation is going to have uh, forward slash API on it. Um, so that's going to enable, you know, this is the endpoint that it will be accessing when it's forward slash API forward slash uh, register. Okay, so it seems that I accidentally um, put that uh, the user needs to be fully authenticated um, on the register endpoint. So uh, we can see here I made a typo instead of uh, base URL in capitals. It should be base URL like so. Um, so yes, um, yeah, keyboard the keyboard warrior coming out in me. Um, so now if we go back to the register endpoint, um, what we can now do is we can register a user. So we're going to say Bob and we're going to call it Bob um, at Bob.com and uh, then we'll give it a random password and let's see what happens. Okay, so uh, we can see that there we go. Something has been sent off to the correct endpoint. Um, it's a status code of 200. And let's see what response it's giving us. Um, it's not giving us any response there. Here we go. OK, excellent. So we can see um, that it's given us a response in JSON of the user. So if we head over to the database, there we go, we can see that the user has been saved, um, bob at bob.com, and it's given us that password, and uh, it's encoded the password to be more specific. Uh, that's important, right? We want it to do that. And then it's also saved the name Bob. Um, so that's excellent, right? So we can now register users from our front end um, quite easily, and it also has that loading state that we were talking about. If you noticed, it was loading, and then when it wasn't loading, it stopped, which is, Awesome. Okay, so um, onward and upward. <laughs> <laughs>